Cade Miele, Miele Falce, Karja, and welcome to this week's episode of Up My Own Hole. Gaurav Miele Mahagut to everyone who has liked, shared, subscribed to this podcast already. And if you're new to this podcast and you like what you see and you hear, please don't hesitate to recommend to friends and share around. You can find me on any social media and at Up My Own Hole on Twitter, TikTok and Instagram. Shine. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Up My Own Hole. It's Mr. Seamus O'Krulliak and I am your host. This week I have purchased a new light, a new microphone, a projector. Um, so I'm going to try and work with them this week. Um, so yeah, it's just a bit, it's a bit different. But we'll try and make it work. Um... I went for a jog yesterday. I did another 18 kilometers. Um and it absolutely nearly killed me. Doing the, the run was fine. Coming back from the run was fine, stretched out, got something healthy to eat and uh I just got this horrendous migraine or pain in my head or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I don't I don't normally suffer from them. But uh yeah, Jesus Christ, it was bad, man. It was crippling, almost. I couldn't even move. Every time I moved, it was, it was like there was a clamp in the back of my head. And I was drinking water, and I was, I was, I had my fucking, I was eating jellies, like to get the sugar into me and and the carbs, and but I don't know, whatever it was, and I sucked big time. So I'm in no farm to be doing a podcast, if I'm honest. Um, but shall we drive it on? Um, and obviously then I don't feel like I don't feel like I can talk about anything else that's going on unless it is something to do with what's going on in Palestine at the moment you know Um, they're saying now that the so there's different parts of Palestine obviously it's it's a country and then it was there's all different parts you had the West Bank then you had the you have Gaza uh, you have all these different areas, but no, they're saying that people in the West Bank, their houses are being demolished in order for the settlers to come in and and to build their own houses there on top of theirs, you know. So it's where the war wasn't wasn't before. It is now. It's everywhere, and and nobody's safe anywhere. And as I've said before, the they're bombing Rafa, which is a refugee. Uh, place like it's a refugee center within a refugee within their own country so like it's like running from Sydney to Perth or Sydney to Melbourne in order to stop being bombed or from Cork to Kerry or whatever and no matter where you go you're still being bombed no matter what there's drones overhead and they're dropping bombs and they're blowing houses and tents and children and schools and hospitals and everything all everything all over the place really so it's um it's just horrific, um, and I, I don't know what else to talk about, really, because I feel like there's nothing more important than talking about that. Um, one thing I can say, like, for my own mental health and stuff, is that I, I do find it hard to to balance it all, and I do find it hard to to look at it and, and not see it for what it is, really, you know, and it's not about how good my mental health is at any stage and it's not about how how important my you know, my my mental state is um it's it's about it's about looking at the fucking facts like i i feel no matter how mentally stable you are no matter how many tools you have in place to help um help you get through your day just on a, a normal day or no matter what kind of stuff you've learned over the years, no matter what kind of therapy you've went to, this stuff is in your fucking, is in your face, like, do you know? And we, as citizens and as people of the world, we, we, we trust in, in those in power, like, to, to, to make sure that what we do, and what, or, or what goes on around us is, is somewhat safe, and, and, um, and that, you know, that, like, we shouldn't have to worry about what we are drinking water, say. Like, you know, we shouldn't have to worry about um, 
what we eat, like the food that they're, everything should be regulated, like, you know, and every, everything should be, so like if I walk into Aldi's or, or Woolies over here or Super Value at home or fucking whatever, like ShopRite in America, whatever it is, the, all, the, all these shops should be re regulated and they should, they, like we should we should be able to buy what we want and, and, and eat what we want knowing that it's safe for us to eat it, you know, um, because of the regulations and, and, and the people in power and the people that are being paid to do these things in order to keep our lives somewhat safer, you know. Um, it's not back in the fucking Stone Age where we used to be getting poisoned by berries off trees, you know what I mean? So, um, when it comes to that kind of stuff, then, and what's going on around the world, and what's going on, on in Palestine, in Congo as well, um, in Yemen, in Libya, in all these other parts of the world where all these things happened before, it's not 200 years ago where people, where war was kind of, like the English colonialism where they just went around taking people's land and, and it was kind of okay. Like, when you're, when you're taught that in history, it was like, oh, this is what happened and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but it's happening today and, and like the people in power, the ones that are making, that are meant to make life safe for us, um, aren't really doing it, you know. Um, so the people in power, like the biggest power in the world, you'd say is, is the United States of America um, and the president of that came from, you know, fucking f a, f a famine, a genocide Ireland. Uh, his his father or grandfather came before him, and you know. So you think that all oh, these people would would have some bit of cop on that you you could put your trust in them, and that that they'll get rid of all the evil entities and and the bad people and the dictators and all this in the world, and and instead they're actually worse than. Than anything we've ever heard of before, like you know. Um, so when, like, I don't want to worry about anything. You know, I want to know that everything's okay, and and I want to pay my taxes and 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 whatever to, and buy products and to know that everything everything's been done right, and and that there's a, that there's someone over it, like, looking over it and and whatever, and it's it's just that's not the case, like you know. Um, it would war. And, and genocide, these are words that you should be hearing in history, you know, in, in history class, and you shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to think that that is, I shouldn't have to think that that is, like, going on today. I should only know that word as a past situation, not a current situation, you know, and therefore I shouldn't have to I shouldn't have to worry about anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're going, we're we're in twenty twenty four. So like, drinking water should be clean for everyone around the world. Um, food should be edible all over the world. People should be safe in their own homes all over the world. People should have homes, their own home all over the world. Plenty of room for all of all of us. Like you know, but instead, what you're getting is um. Instead, of what you're getting is poisonous food, kind of in shops. You have drinking water there that's full of fluoride and and all these other things. You have, um, don't know. You have, you have once what were once conspiracies are now facts. Um, talking about chemtrails in the sky, I used to be always saying the fellas were after game with that. And then you see what happened in Dubai there or Abu Dhabi or wherever it was a couple of months ago, or a couple of weeks ago. Where they were caught fucking putting chemicals in the in the sky to make it rain over the desert in order to make us make it habitable, I suppose. Um, but they did it during a storm and it caused floods. So chemtrails are a thing. Um, that the worst, the the biggest, the biggest, the biggest terrorists in the world are the ones that we are paying our tax to. So, you know, did like. You see what happened in, 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 in Libya there with, with fucking Gaddafi and you see that he had all free things and in, in like free healthcare, free education. If you had to go sent somewhere else, he'd pay for your education and you know, all this kind of stuff. He was trying to create a, a United Nations of, of Africa um, and then he gets killed as well, you know, because it was going against 
everything else that was going that that um it was going against the the capitalism um model of what's implemented today in in globally you know so just things like that and it's just like you fucking it's it's way it's hard it's hard to uh it's hard to fathom that this is the life we're living and this is the world we're a part of and the people that we're meant to trust we can't um and something has to change drastically and on top of all that we are we are in the midst of some probably the most like historic time on earth really um so like like we all hear about Auschwitz and we go visit that in Poland or um I don't know how we go visit see the Anne Frank house in Amsterdam uh, all these different things that's that's what's going to happen after this now like you know but it, what's worse about this is that it's the people that came to save Europe and came to save the world from the Nazis and save the Jews ultimately the people that came to save them are the ones that are implementing this now. You know, so th there is no knight in, knight in shining armor for us. There's no allies for us. The allies of this are the allies of the evil, the evil entity that is Netanyahu and and Zionism. So it's hard to. Understand, I'm I'm in Australia now at the moment, and the government here, and the colleges and everything here give billions to Israel every year, you know. And I just seen a video today of this woman that, when she came to the house, it's on the news in Australia now. Uh, when she came to the house, that she bought as a, as a as a, how would you say, as a settler in in. Israel, which is actually Palestine, she got a she got an email from her network provider, her Wi-Fi provider, to say welcome to Palestine, and she is appalled. It's all over the news here, like um, her and she got two emails saying that welcome to Palestine. Um, she's appalled. I like, just can't believe it. Like it's very upsetting. It's very this, and you're like it. it but you are in Palestine. You know that, yeah. You're actually a settler in a country, you know, like it's crazy. Um, so that's the kind of ties that Australia have, like so. They, they, as we all know, the, the encampments that are going on at the moment, um, they're they, what they're fighting for and striking for and protesting for is to cut all ties with any Israel Israeli connections. So anybody that's anybody that's connected to certain companies I, I Telstra I think is one of them that they're actually they have their own like IT course going on within the college at the moment something to that effect they have a course running and with the more they investigate into it the more they're starting to see the loop that it's going to Telstra but then Telstra is funding it all back to Israel and then that money is being used for arms and 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 everything else to kill Palestinian civilians you know um, so that's where that protest is going. It's going on all over the world. Um, yeah, it's it's happening before our very eyes, and it's 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 happening for years. It's happening since nineteen forty eight, really. Um, the Belfort Declaration actually happened in nineteen eighteen, I think. Um, so it's actually going on that long. But uh, yeah, you had you had the mass. Um, evictions in 1948 of of Palestinians from their homes um and they were they were sent all over Europe or sent sent like to fucking the Lebanon and all these other places to find ref find shelter and they were refugees to there's refugee camps that are that are that old like since 1940 in the in Lebanon and so you know what grows from that then is racism and 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 hatred and you know because people are, are not getting the same rights as everyone else so that's only one side of things and then nowadays it's not even that they don't get the same rights they're being bombarded time and time again they're getting messages 
The Is- Israeli forces are flying overhead and they're dropping leaflets. Get the fuck out of town. Get down to this part. And they do it. A lot of them don't because they want to stand their ground and it's their home and they love it. And they're being bombed to smithereens. So then the ones that do keep moving and do keep moving and do keep moving, they can't go any further because they're, they're, go- they're being bombed reg- regardless. So the next border that they'll hit now is Egypt and Egypt don't want them. And they close the borders, but also the Israeli forces are standing on the borders. So when they come up to, to, to cross the border, they're being, they're being gunned down and, and murdered. In plain sight, in front of everyone. And, uh, yeah, you have the, like, all these different administrations then that are, like, put, uh, there, there's plans made already, like, for the Gaza, for Gaza. So they, they want to knock all that because it's right on the, on the sea. And they want to knock all their houses. 90% of them are knocked anyway. But they, the, the plan is to knock them all and then build holiday homes, like, you know, for rich Americans and rich, rich people all over the world. Germans, Irish. English, whatever the fuck, um, to come and holiday in down there, you know? And ev- eventually, what they want is all of it, just to be Israel and Palestine not to be a thing, Palestinian people not to be a thing, and and it's happening in front of our very eyes. It's, it's incredible. It's in... Yeah, it's an almighty evil that's right in front of our very fucking eyes, and... There is, there is huge solidarity all over the world, which is great, and, and the work that's been done is fantastic. And at the end of the day, if th- those in power are only in power because we vote them in. So that's what we can't forget. And, and the people in power, so the people are the power, and the people in power are already there because we gave them some of our power. But what we can just do is just come together again in numbers, come together all over the world and connect and fight for the rights of the Palestinian people, you know? Um, And just to make sure that this is... that this is... this is... gonna end, end soon, and that it never happens again. Um... I feel like I'm repeating myself on the podcast the last few weeks, but it's it's just getting worse and worse. The situation in Palestine is getting worse and worse. So I'm finding it very hard to not talk about it, really. Um, but what I can say is that I'm doing the jogs. I'm doing. The, I'm, I'm getting into mileage. I did 18 kilometers again yesterday, and I had a severe headache after it. But um, but yeah. So if you want to donate, you can donate it in the link in my bio there, and. Um, and the link in this podcast, there'll be a description wherever you get this podcast and the description will will show you um, the link. And you can, if you click that, you can donate there. It'd be great if you could. I'm going to do a marathon on the 2nd of June. Me, along with everyone else in Cork City who's doing the Cork City Marathon. But the, and then there's one branch off group that is called Runners for Palestine. Excuse me. Runners for pa- Palestine. And uh, I'm in the WhatsApp. So as the Cork City Marathon is going to be going ahead... I'm going to be doing it over here. So I think I start at four in the afternoon and I'm going to have to run straight through to about nine o'clock. Um, some people in Cork are just going to do a 10k or a, or, a, or walk it or a half marathon or whatever and that's all okay too. You know, it's great just to have people come together for this and do something proactive and... Um, and uh, a bit of fitness is always good, you know what I mean? If it's only a walk or a fucking jog, whatever, it's good. And it's good to, it's good for the head, it's good for the mental health. And anything nowadays for mental health is great because of how much badness there is out there. So it's a fantastic cause. And um, it's for two families, in, in two lads in Cork, and their families are still in Gaza. And they're trying to get them out or trying to get food and stuff to them as well. I don't know the, exactly what they're going to do exactly with the money, but the, that's where it's for, it's for two Palestinian people's families. So it's a fantastic cause. And I, I'm just privileged to be a part of it. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to clock in more mileage and um, try to get that done. And if you could, anyone could donate, it'd be great. Thanks very much. Um, and thanks everyone who's been following this the whole time, you know. And and uh, 
if you're feeling down or whatever because of, the, of, of what's going on and you're, you're being bombarded on social media and stuff, just take a break. Take a break or talk to someone who, who actually, who cares, you know what I mean? And that will, that will allow, you or allow your feelings to be valid and allow what's going on for you physically, mentally and spiritually with what's going on. They'll allow you to, to feel and but they'll also relate with you and you can relate to one another and therefore you can be there for each other ultimately, you know. Um, I'm always there if anybody wants to message me in, in, in any state of affairs, if it's over Palestine or if it's addiction or just mental health or you just you want to change and you just can't get out of it, give me a buzz. I might be able to help, but just by buzzing me alone is helping, you know. Um, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy watching it. It's not it's fucking. It's not easy knowing it. Um, yeah, it sucks really. Like you know. Um, so, yeah, I suppose that's um, that's all I can say about it really. And for now, and um, yeah, I just hope that just keep getting onto your 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 local councillors, your your local. Um, like TDs and ministers, um, and just make sure you're, you're pushing for for them to 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 do more. You know, um, very proud of where I come from. Ireland is 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 up there with probably one of the most supportive and and uh, countries in the world. I met a man here the other day. He was he was um, up in the up in a cafe. He was, he was I was in the queue in the queue, and he was taking a piss out of me, and he was standing behind me, and he said, "Oh, I was actually." Taking a picture of my accent or whatever, and uh, he said I was with Declan O'Rourke touring around. He said I was in St. Luke's with him just last September or whatever. And we got chatting. I said, "Sit down with me there if you want, and we'll have a chat." And we're chatting away, and he's showing me pictures. Then I've been up in uh, Galway, and they're outside a castle, and they made a big fucking banner for Palestine, and they got an aerial view. And do you know this man is a is a New Zealand man, um, living in Sydney, and when he went to Ireland, he was a part of a huge like candlelight vigil where they made a huge banner, do you know, and that's what he saw. And he said if there was anywhere he'd live in the world, it would be Ireland, like, you know. And that's the fucking, that's who we are, like, you know. And that's what I try to pro portray when, I, when, when I'm when when I'm I'm abroad. I try to show that side of me, you know, and, <coughs> and I try to fucking, <coughs> I feel obligated. I feel obligated to show who, who we are. Um... I feel it, I, I wear it like a badge of honour. Um, and it's unfortunate that people over here don't do the same, you know. Um, because of this country being so affiliated with, with Israel and stuff like that, that a lot of Irish people just stay quiet. They don't want to, they don't want to be, they don't want to go against the grain here, you know, because a lot of them are on visas and they'll be fucked out of the country or whatever, or they, or they won't get a job maybe and they won't, you know, it's more it's more trying to work up the ladder than it is to fucking you know speak out um and go against the grain everybody just wants to jump in line here and try work their way up which is fine um but it's kind of not at the same time you know what i mean it's uh it's sad it's um to be part of this colonial fucking country and 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 shying away from who you really are and, and what you really want to do because you're afraid of, of the system, you know. And it's that same system that's fucking doing these things around the world, you know. And that's not just the Australian government, I mean, all governments all over the world, you know. Um, so it's sad, it's sad to see. No, there is Irish people that come out as well and they, and they stand and they protest and they do a few things on their social media and stuff, but not a lot. A lot of them pull away um, and they're kind of afraid of it, really. They must be, or it's they just don't give a fuck, and they're so this heartless. But I doubt that. Um, but we, it's in our DNA, you know. Everything that's been done to the Palestinian people is has been done to our 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 people. Um, so yeah, I I do wish that that people would come out more and uh, and do more, really. But uh, like, I'd love to see fucking Gaelic Gaelic teams like getting their own banner in a protest and do you know it'd be fucking great like to, to, you know all, all, all these other things and I don't know I, it'd be great just to try to get a few heads together there and, and try to do it I might actually start reaching out to people and to see if they 
if there is any interest then um because there must be do you know there must be and it'd be great to have there are so many of us over here now we should have our own fucking our own like do you know our own community our own our own um our own rights and stuff like that you know like we Again, the, the powers and the people, and the majority of the people over here are fucking Irish, like, so that's where the power is, and we should come together and use that in the same breath that we would at home or the same breath that we would in any other country. Like we did in New York, we got fucking, we got things passed in New York in order to keep the illegal people legal and, you know, all these kind of things, and it's, this, it's the same thing that's happening here now than was happening over there back in the 70s and 80s, so, yeah, I don't know, it's... um. This is fucking huge, and we all know it's fucking huge. You know what I mean? And it needs it needs addressing every single time until it stops. So, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, with the projector, now, we'll try to put that to work for the crack. Um, I'm gonna try and go into YouTube here now, and just see if there's anything. So I just typed in the war on Gaza. Um, and we're going to see if there's anything that we can debunk or just learn from. With some of the most intense fighting for weeks now taking place on the northern and southern edges of Gaza, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians are again fleeing to safety. Satellite imagery shows the rapid growth of a refugee camp in southern Gaza as Israeli forces appear to be pressing ahead with plans for a ground attack on Rafah. About 400,000 Gazans have now left Rafah, according to the United Nations. According to the Hamas-run health ministry, the death toll in Israel's military operation in Gaza has now surpassed 35,000. The U.S. State Department says it is possible Israel may have violated international law during its war with Hamas. It's reasonable to conclude that there are instances where Israel has acted in ways that are not consistent with international humanitarian law. The war was triggered by a Hamas-led attack on southern Israel October 7th, in which some 1,200 people were killed and more than 250 people taken hostage. Today is Israel's Memorial Day. Mourners gather to remember loved ones killed by Hamas gunmen at the site of Nova Music Festival. We all want the war. We'll end, but we didn't start it. Israel says it's doing everything it can to protect Palestinian civilians, but also vowing to expand its operation in Rafah. Alexis Christophers, ABC News, New York. <laughs> Where do we fucking start? Military so this guy... Um, that man there, Anthony Blinken. So, I recently got a video sent to me to show that, here we are now, to show that his connection with Jeffrey Epstein. Um, and they say that Jeffrey Epstein was murdered literally because he was an Israeli agent. So he would have been a spy for Israel and he had all these files and all very powerful people of America doing very, very horrific things when it came to children and, and young boys and girls sexually and everything else, you know. So he was using that then to, to buy his way to the top and and using it in order to, to keep power in Israel, you know. So I think Israel connects interference this fella here something fishy I think is this one hopefully this will play now yeah so we try his partner Ghislaine Maxwell her dad Maxwell Robert Maxwell Israeli's super spy and then his lawyer and confidant and this is his son. That's the fella Anthony Blinken I just told you about. So there's a huge connection there, Anthony Blinken. So the Pentagon announced that Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has approved 147.5 million worth of M107-155 uh, millimeter artillery Mutation, whatever the fuck, to Israel bypassing Congress approval 
by activating a national emergency. So, do you know what I mean? This this guy, his father was a lawyer for Ghislaine Maxwell's father, who was a super spy for Israel. And, yeah. So, it, in other words, Zionists are are in power of the world right now. Um, and they have every uh, political leader and world power by the fucking nuts and they can just play him like puppets so that's who he is and that's the fellow who's coming out now even saying that israel might have um crossed the crossed the line in in regards to humanitarian um or in 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 crimes against war crimes sorry so that israel has committed war crimes might maybe maybe if you think about it. Um, and then you had that girl at the, at the music festival, of course, which is horrible, um, in the last video, who said that, you know, she said, that, oh, it's, we, don't, we want peace and, and war, but we didn't start this, you know? We didn't start it yet. And, uh, and that's what they're being told in Israel, you know? A lot of people in Israel are, are, are hearing that, and that's what they believe. And I remember being in... in uh, in Rome, back in fucking Patrick's Day a couple of years ago, and uh, there was two Israeli girls down at down outside the bar, and I was chatting to them, and I was like, "What the fuck is the problem? Like, what, what, what are you doing?" And she started going, and ah, she got fucking angry, man. She turned and, oh, you don't give a fucking fuck this and fuck that, and you, you they fucking beat their wives and their fucking dirt and their this and their that. And the next thing, a couple of lads came over that they knew, and they looked like military heads, like. So I was just looking at me and said, I'm getting the fuck out of here now before I get killed. Um, luckily, I had I wasn't drinking at the time, so I knew <laughs> I knew when to stop. But uh, but that's what they believe, and that's who they are, and that's that's exactly and um, what you're up against, you know. So they they know no different, like you know. A lot of a lot of English people today are only learning about the, the atrocities that happened in Ireland because they were never taught it either, you know. So that's what you're up against, and. Um, I just kind of wanted to do that, just to use the projector there. Even though people edit nowadays, I'm uh, just using my projector. But uh, yeah, so it's look, it's mental. It's it's crazy. What's going on is not okay, and we must do something to stop it. And what we're doing now at the moment is is uh, protesting, pushing for fucking for ties to be cut. And uh, and and lives to be saved, and and we just keep doing that regardless. Um, thanks for listening. Um, if you have any questions, renting, let me know. If you want to chat about anything, if you if you're if you're late to the party, to party, God forgive me. If you're late to the fucking, if you're late to this information, or you just didn't want to hear about it before, but now it's getting to a stage where you do. Um, don't be afraid to ask people, like you know, what's going on. Do you know what's what what's happening? Where we're people will tell you. I'll tell you if if you want to reach out because years ago, like I'm, I'm only able to do this today because of changing my life. So like if I if I never changed who I was, I'd never be able to do the things I do today. Obviously, so I know there's people in the position I'm in now, and also in the position I was in years ago. And and this isn't. Like second nature, like you're on university. I used to, I used to run away from anybody who was in a university. No, I go and I and I support their causes, you know, because I never felt good enough to be in a university. It was a frightening, frightening place for me, and I still, I've never gone to university. I, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that I, I've, I don't fear anything anymore. I'm, I'm in my own skin today, and I know how how important I am in my life, and so. But without having that today, I would never look into other things, do you know? Because I'd be always kind of um never think I I I was good enough and, and the word the big words that they're using would go over my head and and I would just stop and I'd go I'd stay ignorant to what's going on. So I understand where people are at and I understand if people are interested and they want to learn more, I would highly recommend that you do because this isn't over yet and we need all the people we, we can get. Um just just to even even just to fucking to tell someone else what you've learned is a huge step in the right direction, you know. Um, so, yeah. 
So I'm going to leave it there, I think, guys. My head is starting to hurt again. So I'm going to get this light out of my eyes. Um, I'm going to put down all the technology. And I'm going to go in and have my dinner that the beautiful Anne has made me. Oh, she thought me I have to say her name three times in the podcast as well. And I have to say this low so she won't hear me. Anne, Anne, Anne. There we are now. So, find the beauty in it, lads, some way, shape or form. Look after one another. Do something that will make you feel good about yourself. Go for a jog. Or don't. Eat a cookie. Buy a big cake. Light, put a lot of candles into a cake and give it to someone when it's not their birthday. And just confuse the fuck out of them. And eat loads of cake. You can do that too. Whatever it is you want to do. Do it, but make sure you're looking after yourself in the process. I love you all. God me the good. It's long a fall. God me the good for listening. If you like what you see and what you hear, um, please like, share, subscribe, recommend to a friend, subscribe to my channel. Um, and yeah, we leave it there. Slang of all.